Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Luke Lintz. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting and Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here this wonderful Sunday. I don't know if it's morning for you or afternoon, but I'm grateful to have you here today. You're going to share with our audience how they can help explode their social media platforms, use it in the mean and a way that really helps explode their business because not all social platforms meet whatever business you're you're currently in, but you've helped people become Insta famous on Instagram. <laughs> uh, that's really your specialty, but you know how all the social media platforms kind of jive, but we're going to, you know, explore that a little bit, but share, you've been a serial entrepreneur since your teens and exploded from there. How did it all come about for you? Thank you so much for having me on. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it started when I was in high school. I was 16 years old and uh, I was kind of just trying out new things with my brother. We always wanted more than uh, having like a job. We always had a job because we were like very hard workers and we just needed to have money for for basic things. Mm -hmm. And we didn't grow up rich at all. We grew up like fairly middle class. And so uh, we, we were just looking at ways to make more money and like do things where uh, we could grow an influence. And so we started up a YouTube channel when I was actually 15. And so that was like kind of like the the first like thing that we did online with social media. Uh, and <laughs> and we did gaming. So like we did, we, whenever we started up a business, we we utilized uh, the things that we knew best. So at the time when I, when I was 15, I would watch a lot of other people playing video games. Same with my brother, where it was a huge thing on YouTube. It's like people reacting to them playing video games. And we we went on that for eight months without uh, a real uh, trajectory of like making money. And it, it didn't really go anywhere. We had like 150 subscribers. and but, but it taught us a lot of valuable skills. It taught us like how to be on camera. It taught us how to film, how to edit. A lot of like really, really key things that we used in our entire journey of business where uh, we started making a lot of money when we started posting, creating a lot of viral content and helping our clients do the same thing eventually of creating content and eventually like hiring an entire team to, uh, to manage people's brands and stuff. So it all snowballed into one another. But uh, it, when we first started like a business, so to speak, was when I was 16 and we started uh, a wireless earbud company, basically. And so th this is at the time when wireless earbuds weren't really a thing. That we were like kind of like the first ones on the market, so to speak. And uh, we pulled together our money. Uh, it, it was like about like $10,000 at the time, $8,000. Pulled it together, bulk bulk purchased inventory, and then had no idea how to market this stuff because we didn't, I, I was in high school. We didn't have any business knowledge, didn't have any marketing knowledge. So again, we went to the only platform that we knew at the time really well, which was Instagram. We used Instagram all personally. Instagram was a huge thing among, amongst uh, all of our peers. And so we, we, we just started posting content with based off of the viral content that we saw on Instagram. So like mm. we would, you know how you have the, a newsfeed section on your Instagram. So yep. we would go at the, we would go in the newsfeed section, see the, the very viral videos and stuff, and then repost that and talk about our products in the, in the captions just mm. to create like viral traction to our page. <laughs> and then, so, you know, can I, can I get, just stop you for a moment? So basically what you did, you found other people had a viral video that it was exploding. Millions of people were watching it, paying attention to it. And then you just started communicating on that thread to get people to notice you. Is that pretty much it? Yeah. 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 It, it, so we would do that too, but then we would also like literally take their content because Instagram didn't have policies at the time for like reposting other people's content. We would use an app to download their video, re-edit it with like our branding and stuff and then repost it on our page and get the same amount of views as they were getting. We were getting hundreds of thousands of views just by like reposting viral content with a uh -huh. caption. It was like free marketing with a caption about our our products that had nothing to do with the video. It was just a viral piece of content with caption about our product. Wow. So now you mentioned something about guidelines changing. So I'm guessing now that's not a practice they allow. Or, or do definitely they? not a practice no. that they allow and <laughs> it, it, it's with a lot of things that have changed over the years of social media but it basically with it, all the social media platforms right now it's heavily restricted of like if you, if you post other people's content uh without giving credit credits back or if you get flagged from a huge channel by yeah. reposting their content you'll get flagged and your account will get deleted pretty much immediately so that's a bad thing <laughs> that was a unique <laughs> yeah yeah 
But I'm guessing when you were noticing that certain videos got viral, there's something that viral videos do that the ones who don't go viral don't do. What have you noticed as far as, you know, your ongoing research that you notice what makes things viral? Yeah, yeah. so we we were when we first started, we were just reposting other people's mm -hmm. content. And what we noticed with things that were going viral were just like really, really unique videos. And it's the same type of stuff that you see on TikTok, very unique pieces of content, either like with celebrities, all celebrity content goes viral. If it's very unique, like behind the scenes or very unique content with a celebrity. But then there's other things that are just very eye-catching videos mm -hmm. like that, that it's kind of a common sense thing in terms of if you can see a video and you get hooked in and you really want to watch the video after two seconds of seeing it, it, it has a lot of viral capabilities with that. Mm -hmm. And and so what we tried to do is we were like, well, we're not really building a brand here because we're just reposting other people's content. We're making sales with the Rallis earbuds, but there's nothing mm -hmm. lasting about this. And so yeah. we, 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 we were trying to figure out how can we create viral content with ourselves in the content instead of reposting other people's content. And mm -hmm. I think this is a lot of, it, this is a, what everybody tries to think of in terms of yeah. all business owners, all entrepreneurs, how do you create like viral content with mm -hmm. yourselves in the content to build a brand? And at the time, Again, we were doing the only thing that we knew at the time, which was we knew Instagram and we all went to school. So I was in high school uh, and then my two business partners who are my older brother and a good friend were in university. Mm -hmm. And so we thought that it would be really good to create relatable content to school to school students like so so i knew like how the high school environment was and then my my brother my, his friend knew how the university environment was and so we created videos where we product placed our earbuds into it where we were making <laughs> making content of like funny school skits and so uh. like from that we were able to go viral with our with our own content which was like really cool yeah. And what I'm capturing from you is that you focused on something you could feel a niche for, meaning something you were somewhat of an expert in. You're in high school. This is a perspective I can provide a unique view into because I'm living it. Um, and then you went with that because I think sometimes people try to say, well, what can I do to copy so-and-so? And is that really your thing? And can you really add to it and want to have people drawn to you in it if, if it's something you're not you know like you're not a student in high school you can't do videos like that yeah yeah and th th this is the great great point that you brought up there and this is this is the biggest point that we tell all of our clients of like the clients that we manage their brands and social media accounts is that to, to create viral content of thin air is very, very hard. And to create content that people want to watch is very, very hard. And it's much easier. And this is what Gary Vee says all the time, is that you just got to create content to document one, and you got to create content that you know stuff about. So like just literally pick the area that you you know the most stuff in. So like if you're a real estate agent, like be speaking to your audience specifically about like what you know the most and what you think that your target audience would want to hear about. Mm. And uh, we have we have racers here. I don't know if I told you I live next to NASCAR. Not really. No. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's funny is I've also seen YouTube channels take off where someone's going through a journey, let's say they've they're through the process of losing 100 pounds and they start documenting, as you mentioned, on YouTube, their process and people begin to see them go through the process, they get healthy and they lose weight. And that draws people in, they might not be an expert yet, but just the very nature of documenting it and staying consistent with it, inspires people and, and often makes uh, viral videos in that fashion. Yeah, exactly. And it's the combination of documentation and what you're an expert in. And if you're not an expert in something, then it's just pure documentation. And if like you, if you're striving for a goal and like you have a very strong desire and you know that you're committed to that, like documentation is such a powerful thing. Like it's something that I wish I did like, because, and this is what a lot of business owners get into is they become so wildly successful without necessarily creating content to get there and then they wish that they documented the entire process because it's so valuable and this mm -hmm. is something like i'm not sure if you've ever seen like alex and layla hermosi they, mm -hmm. they talk about this too they're very very big business people and it, it's unbelievable that they they run a hundred million dollar business and on their youtube channel and stuff they're they're like the biggest business people that are creating 
creating content consistently about yeah. their business and how other people can scale up to get there. But even Alex, he talks about, he's like, I wish I documented the entire process because I only started documenting once I was successful. And like, when you get to a point of success, like people really want to see you going through those failures and what it was like on a day-to-day -day basis when you were like in the ruts and, and getting up to that next level. Yeah. And even from a personal note, there's been some bloggers, video bloggers who maybe weren't even trying to build a successful brand or YouTube channel, but they had that what you call strong desire to reach a goal. And what I like about, you know, documenting is it's kind of that accountability. You have this audience watching you, you're putting up the videos and if you fail and you don't go through, you kind of let not just yourself down, but you have this kind of accountability partners in your goal. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> Literally the accountability component is so huge, especially if you don't have any like business partners or any family who's into the business with you to be accountable for you. Then like, yeah, having, having an online audience that's accountable, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Now I would like to talk more about, I've seen that you really use a lot of celebrity to kind of help bring that viral nature and, and explode videos for your, um, your clients, but you know, how do people even begin to make contact? Let's say you're a business owner, but you don't really have that Rolodex as it were, of uh, people that are influential. How do you even begin to bridge that gap and make connections where they even want to talk to you? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to, so there's a lot of components to this. <laughs> so you, 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 you have influencers that we categorize as like micro influencers, like usually around like under 500,000 followers on most platforms. And then you have like uh, macro influencers who aren't like A-list celebrities, but they're B-list. And then you have A-list celebrities. So like there's categories to each one of them. And then the A-list celebrities are ones that are like famous in the public eye. They get natural PR. They have like tens of millions of followers. Like every, every single person knows about them. Mm -hmm. and and so you, you can't just like start with the A-list celebrities because you, you have to build a business that they want to be willing to partner with where it's more than just money to them at this point. Like everybody has a price at some point, but it, it for the A-list celebrities, it's more than just, just a certain amount of money. And like, mm -hmm. we know this because we've talked with some celebrities about partnering on certain projects with a, an astronomical number of what the cost would be. And they turn it down because it doesn't align with their values. And that's a huge thing with A-list celebrities. Mm -hmm. So it, with us, what we did is we worked our way up. So with our, with our first brand, uh, with the e-commerce brand, uh, where we were selling wireless earbuds, we were working with like micro info influencers and we were just this is what everybody still can do and this is a huge thing we don't normally do this for our clients but we consult them on how to do this in terms of connecting with micro influencers where you don't normally need to pay them anything especially if they like the product and this is the biggest thing is we worked with this one brand where we literally just created a campaign of sending out pro their product because it was a really really good product to a ton of influencers and asked for nothing in return and wow. once once they tried tried the product and really liked the product. Then we went to them and asked, would you like on an ongoing free subscription of this product in exchange for these deliverables of posting? And this is what you see massive brands doing, especially like Instagram specific brands like Fashion Nova, mm -hmm. Bang Energy did this. A bunch of other really, really big brands like took over the micro influencer market because they realized like how lucrative it is. People with like hundreds of thousands of followers and like millions on TikTok mm -hmm. where you don't even have to pay them and you just exchange for a product really good for product-based businesses and then when you move up to the macro level where what once you once you start making money on the micro level you realize how lucrative it is and then you can move up to the macro level of people who are in like the b-list celebrity range and you start paying them a decent amount and they they won't charge that that much if they actually like the product that's the biggest thing and that's where like it kind of comes back to like product is the number one thing like yeah. everything stems from having a really good product. Word of mouth comes from that. Like uh, testimonials come from that. Mm -hmm. uh, celebrity endorsements come from that. People working with you easier all comes from just having an extremely good product. Yeah. Now I love that you're talking product. Uh, a lot of our um, business owners are service-based entrepreneurs. Uh, how does it work in their realm? Because they don't really have something they could trade as far as an actual physical product. Do they have anything they can work with to try to connect with um, you know, um, smaller influencers. 
Yeah. So this is the boat that we're in right now. We started off as a product based business. We realized that like all of our flaws that we had in business were on the product based side, but we were really good at marketing and branding. So that's, mm-hmm. that's where the transition happened to a marketing agency and a, mm-hmm. a public relations firm that we are now is, mm-hmm. is because that we just focus on what we're specialized in, which is service based business. And it's awesome that you have an audience of, of mainly service based businesses. And it's definitely much more difficult to be working with uh, service service based businesses specifically, and what it comes down to is what 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 we did is we basically figured out a, a reason for celebrities to work with us, even though we were a service based business. Mm-hmm. So we basically uh, did what's called a giveaway model. So we, we and this is kind of like what High Key Cloud is all about is we partner up with A list celebrities, mm-hmm. and those celebrities shout out a giveaway. And they say, hey, everyone, I'm giving away this car. All you have to do is go over to at High Key Clout and follow everybody that they're following. Huh. And so we have a list of giveaway sponsors who sponsor the giveaway and go on our at High Key Clout following list. And so it's like a win for everybody. So like yeah. it's a win for the celebrity because they're getting paid by us. Mm-hmm. Plus they're able to give away something to their audience. So like it aligns with most of their values. Uh-huh. And then it aligns for our sponsors because they're paying for the giveaway while gaining followers and being connected with the celebrity for a fraction of the price. Okay, great. So what I'm getting is, tell me if I'm, I'm getting this right. So you'll have a, a, a bunch of service-based entrepreneurs and they will pitch in um, to buy these um, giveaways that then the A celebrities will then give to their audience, but they didn't have to ba- buy like maybe a whole car because a bunch of business owners went in, bought the car together, and then the celebrity was able to pitch it to their people, give it away, win-win, their audience is happy, and then these people get noticed. Exactly, exactly. And and most of our giveaway sponsors are service-based businesses. That mm-hmm. and, and the reason for that is because like, especially with the, when you're talking about A-list celebrities, the, like the prices get outlandish and service-based mm-hmm. businesses, unless they're like venture-backed or they have a huge reasoning why, it, it, it gets very, very costly to do an individual promotion with these A-list celebrities. Yeah. Like for example, like like Nicki Minaj charges like over $500,000 for one Instagram post. And so mm-hmm. to, to, to justify that expense for an individual promotion of one Instagram post is astronomical for a service-based business and they'll never be able to make the money back. Yeah, it wouldn't, uh-huh. there would be no return on investment. It's interesting. <laughs> I, I worked many years ago with a, I think we w- would call a B-list celebrity. Uh, he worked on a major, um, what do you call it? Uh, the thing they run, so, uh, soap, soap opera. And so yeah. he was phenomenal. He came on my show and I had a live event coming up and I said, I'd like you to be our head speaker. He's like, yeah, I'd love to do that. I charge this much. I'm like, oh, but there's a problem. I don't have any money to pay you. Uh, but could I, you know, and I was trying to, you know, can I give you a bunch of ads or can I do this? He's like, really, I don't need your ad. But he said, you know what, if you could just pick me up, get me a green room, get me, you know, a car to pick me up and get me the best hotel in Manhattan. I was like, hmm, still more than I can afford. But, you know, so we ended up not being able to work together because I just not could not put the money together even for him to be able to afford his price, you know, to come into Manhattan and do our event. But, you know, so I get what you're saying there because if you're a new business getting started, there's no way you could probably even afford some B-listers uh, on, on a small budget. But this allows you to get in there, connect, and also get noticed by some huge influencers out there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and especially for service businesses, just getting started, like what I would highly suggest for service businesses is just to stay completely away from influencers and celebrities until you get to a certain point. And what they should be focusing on is actually giving their services away for free to big businesses or their target demographic to gather testimonials and to get word of mouth started. That's like the biggest component. And then once you hit scale, then working on going to bigger audiences, which are like, collaborating with influencers and celebrities to help get help get more traction and like there's talk about like press and all of that yeah yeah i was new it was my first year out of the box and i was just like yeah i'm gonna ask you if you could speak and i asked two kind of up there people and they just looked at me like i had two heads one person had six emmys and they're like what are you talking about 
<laughs> who are you? Go away. Uh, no, but you know, you live and learn. Uh, but you know, it, it's also getting out there and being comfortable with just speaking to people. So it's that learning experience. But you're right. What What's important is you that people see value in what you have to offer as a new business owner. And I think a lot of new business owners, what I see them make mistakes wise, is they go to these networking events or they're going to try to push, push, push and pitch their item without realizing we don't know who you are. Why do you have, why, you know, it's, it's like sell, sell, sell. And that just pushes people away. It, it, it's, it's yeah. so true. It's so true. Yeah. It's like, it, it, it's the idea of, uh, if like, it's like giving as much value as possible, exactly. especially like we live in a, we, we live in an information, like overload Hello. world, like information <laughs> is, un, information is unlimited and information is everywhere. And yeah. usually like what people need more than anything, especially when they're starting is direction of the information, because there's actually too much information out there that like, sometimes you don't know where to get the best information from. Yeah. And that that's where we're going to bring our final um, kind of question is when you're a new business owner, where do you discover what your best platform or to where your people are hanging out your tribe? Nice. I was, I was very excited to get into, into this topic. Are you okay if we like spend a bit of time on this topic? Cause oh, like, I would love there. to go through like, okay. Totally. <laughs> okay. <Cool>. So, <laughs> so, so, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll go by like each social media platform and like when you should get started on that platform and what industries would be best for that platform. Okay. So basically we have, uh, We'll start with like YouTube. YouTube's a huge one. YouTube's YouTube's search engine specific because it's owned by Google. And so the businesses that should be there should be ones that are focusing on long form content. You shouldn't start a YouTube channel as your first social media platform ever. Your first social media platform has to be something different because YouTube is extremely hard to grow on mm -hmm. right now because there's so much content and you need to have like a very, very like... Uh, very uh highly edited and high quality content in order to succeed on there because there's there's so much competition uh a really good aspect of youtube right now is youtube shorts it's unbelievable mm -hmm. and it's probably going to be it's probably going to be going extremely well for like the next six months it's like the tiktok version of of youtube and they're favoring it unbelievably i just posted a a youtube short uh uh, yesterday and it's at like 70,000 views, like just a hundred percent naturally. And the reach there is unbelievable, especially if you're posting the viral content and it's now up tell to me, a minute what, what, video. Why do people like the really, really short content, like a minute video? What, what, I mean, can you get that much in a minute, in a minute video? Yeah. People really like the, the short, short content on YouTube and TikTok specifically because mm -hmm. it, YouTube and TikTok have algorithms that direct the specific content that you like to watch onto your feed. And so it's literally bite-sized content of the exact, like from a, from a user's perspective and a consumer's perspective, it's the exact content that you want to see in a very short period of time. And so you're able to go through like 15 pieces of YouTube shorts in the time frame of going through one YouTube video. And people really like that aspect. Mm -hmm. And YouTube shorts has done a really good job of competing with TikTok in the sense where uh, it, it's scrollable as soon as you hit on the, on, on, onto the YouTube shorts. And so you're going through content mindlessly uh, where I, I, I'm speaking about these things because I don't really like where it's going with things. And like, it gets people addicted and consumed I'm just talking about from like the marketing perspective of like, this yeah. is, this is what it is. And like, this is how you can like take advantage of it as a business owner. And so as YouTube, it's, it's uh, definitely not the number one platform that you should start on, but especially once you start hitting scale on other platforms, it's the best platform to direct traffic to, because you're able to post long form content and especially for service-based businesses that need explanation of their services. It's unbelievable for what we like to call marinating people into your offer and marinating people into your values, marinating people into where you can't do this on any single other platform. There's no other platform that allows and uh, and has like uh, a platform for very long form content like YouTube. There's no competition with Instagram, no competition with TikTok, all of that. And so it's the best platform to direct traffic to after you have that traffic on another platform. This is usually why we have a strategy of growing people's TikTok accounts, bring that traffic over to the YouTube because TikTok okay. followers are fairly meaningless right now. And there's no real like brand on TikTok okay. where like when you develop a brand on YouTube, it's so, so lucrative. And so that that's YouTube right now. Um, 
definitely if you're going to go on to YouTube, like be posting a ton of YouTube shorts, we're creating a massive YouTube short strategy for, for ourselves because it, it, it's, it's unbelievable how much they're favoring it. Okay. We'll go over to the next. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 did you want to ask any questions about YouTube specifically or? Well, you know, I, I many years ago was starting my um, interviews and my, my, husband or boyfriend at the time was like, no, I only watch YouTube. You should put your videos there because I wouldn't watch them anywhere else. So sometimes it's like wondering where do people want to go watch your content? But it's interesting when you say don't start on that platform. And you mentioned TikTok. Is like TikTok a better way to start your business content there? And as you said, move it over once you build that um, that audience there on TikTok, then merge it over to uh, YouTube. Yeah. So like, I like starting on platforms that have the lowest barrier of entry and TikTok's entire marketing strategy and get, getting started. And especially it still is right now. I'm not sure how long it's going to last, but is that has a very, very low barrier to entry. If you've even spent like any time on TikTok, like if you spend yeah. like an hour a day, you'll, you'll, you'll notice that TikTok videos are not that high quality for the most part, and especially viral videos. And this is the whole essence of their brand is that they, they wanted to lower the barrier to entry for like any single person to have the potential of becoming famous. Mm -hmm. And so with, with, with TikTok specifically, like it's an unbelievable way for anybody to start their brand. And I know that it has uh, the stigma of uh, a very young audience and dancing and singing, but it really isn't that. And it's getting to a point of, of pretty much taking over the entire world. I'm out, I'm honestly a little scared of TikTok in terms of like, it's a Ch mm -hmm. fully Chinese owned company. It's fully taking over. Like every single US based social media platform is scared of it because it's, it, it's, it's fully taking over. Everybody is spending the most time on TikTok compared to any single other social media platform. And so as a business owner, you 100% have to be there in some circumstance. If you're a product-based business mm -hmm. or service-based business and just posting content around what you're knowledgeable about and, uh, forming it into content that's like that that's viral in the sense of tiktok whether that's like going along with the competitions that are on tiktok going along with the vi just at, at the very least using viral music that's on tiktok and lowering the sound and posting on your video instead of just posting a raw video and mm -hmm. then it, yeah. Yeah. And then it really what TikTok, what it's about is it's just about spending a bit of time on TikTok every single day to, to understand what's going viral. It's very, it's very easy. So like if you have a social media manager in your department, you should get them to, to just go through TikTok because that that's better than anything that I could say in terms of, because it, it changes so often in terms of what's going viral and what's doing extremely well. Awesome. The next step. Yeah. The next step is uh, Instagram where okay. Every single business 100% has to be. Instagram is the the first place that we start when whenever uh, a new business or brand or entrepreneur comes to us. If they have an established Instagram or if they uh, have never started an Instagram before, Instagram is number one priority. And it's because Instagram is like the digital business card. It, it, it's across every single industry and it's across pretty much every single age group that whether you're a millennial or whether you're you're a bit older, that people are using Instagram practically as their main landing page, so to mm. speak. And so I, I really try and focus our clients' attention on Instagram in terms of not really producing a ton of content on a monthly basis necessarily, but more so making sure that your Instagram is a direct representation of your business. And by that is basically making sure it looks almost like your website. Like when, when, when new people are coming to your page that they can understand what you're doing in the matter of four seconds mm. and see content that makes them want to work with you. That's pretty much it. That's great. And we don't really focus anything in terms of natural growth on Instagram, because for the most part right now, and I have some articles about me talking about this, but for the most part, Instagram's natural engagement is like just completely done and over like oh. in the most viral industries and with like even celebrity content, there's no really like massive viral content going out there. Mm -hmm. And you see this even with celebrities, like celebrities that we work with and do giveaways with, they never even get like more views than their followers because there, there's just not as much people using the platform as there was years ago. And okay. so it, 
I still think that Instagram is going to be uh, a base of a landing, the the biggest landing page social media, so to speak, for the next five years. And so that's why I think it's so critical in terms of people having a very, very good Instagram presence. Got it. Then- then we have LinkedIn. LinkedIn's the LinkedIn's the biggest for for B two B businesses. So if you have a B two B business, you have to have a LinkedIn profile. You have to have an an agency an agency profile. You don't necessarily have to be posting a ton of content. Again, this is kind of like a landing page where it just needs to look really really good, and that the post that you have is a good representation of who, who you are. And so that that's where we really focus is we focus on like where you're spending the majority of your time creating and publishing content, and for for us and for all of our clients, it's you have to be spending the most time and uh, energy of posting consistent content on platforms like TikTok, where it has the highest natural engagement. And then on other platforms that you're focusing on, just making sure that the quality of content is very high and that the the page looks very good after you're posting that content. And then uh, we have, what else do we have? We have Twitter. Twitter. Uh, Twitter, I've never been a big fan of. I, we, we, we actually never manage clients, Twitter accounts because it's so personable where we've actually never found an accurate way to manage somebody's Twitter account. Because for the most part, people use Twitter as basically just a, just a mind dump for the most part, like businesses use it as like a mind dump. They usually get one person to just manage the Twitter and just like a mind dump of like whatever's going on. A lot of my business friends use it as like just, uh, basically like no of um, what they've learned in the day or, or things like yeah. that. Uh, and, and so I've never thought of uh, Twitter as a massive uh, component of people's social media presence for businesses. It's huge in the crypto communities as, as the biggest. Yeah. yeah. And so, so that's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and then Facebook is Facebook's right now it's, it's moved into Facebook groups for the most part, like practically all engagement on Facebook is going through Facebook groups. And I'm a big fan of uh, Facebook private groups for like masterminds and consulting uh, businesses, huge for that in terms of creating like a community that, especially if those people are like a bit older, like maybe thirties, forties, fifties who use Facebook. And then uh, you can have them in a Facebook group where it's very interactive and easy to post in. And so, uh, yeah, that, that that's it for the for the most part of yeah, <laughs> social yeah. media platforms. You've, you've hit all the major uh, social media. This has been <laughs> so, uh, you know, I totally have stayed away from TikTok because like you mentioned, I saw it as like little teenagers dancing about and I was like, well, that doesn't match my brand. Um, but now that you've given me a lot of food for thought, I'm really going to start to look more into that. And uh, Instagram, we just started doing shorts on there and, and putting up headliner videos. Um, so I really do like Instagram, but I'm going to give uh, TikTok a, a looky. Um, but I've really appreciated you sharing your wisdom and knowledge today with our savvy audience. I'm hoping you've they really uh, go out there and start to see how they can implement a lot of these strategies into their business. But where do they find out more about you work with you guys? How can they do that? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, my name is Luke Lintz. That's L U L U K E L I N T Z. And you can search me up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, on any of those. And the biggest platform that I'm on is is Instagram. Uh, I'm I, I message back to all my Instagram DMs, so uh, you can send me a direct DM there. And uh, if, if you want to see our YouTube videos of behind the scenes with celebrities, go to uh, High Key Co. It's a fun time over there. Awesome. Awesome. And you'll see that at the bottom of the screen here. So if you didn't quite get that, you can go right over to there. The spelling's down there. I thank you so much, Luke, for coming to Savvy Broadcasting Day and sharing your great wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. You betcha. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.